I'm not ready. I'm not ready. <laughs> Well, hello, welcome to lock bar insert part number two. So in the first part, I showed you the insert itself. And just after that, I was able to actually mill the inside of a handle to fit the lock insert. And I carried it all weekend. I'm very happy with it. There's a couple things we need to tweak for sure, but I like it. The knife actually sounds just ever so slightly differently when it opens up and engages. Uh, I like that. It feels very solid, very firm, has zero stick. Um, just gotta tweak the geometries a little bit. So let's crack into this guy and I'll show you what it looks like. This knife is composed of uh, a whole bunch of beater parts, like parts that didn't make the cut, parts that have weird machining marks, uh, mistakes here and there. So we just put them all into a box and get to put together cool knives like this that will never leave the shop pretty much. I'm trying to figure out what to engrave on the side shop knife or never for sale or something like that. So this lock insert is made from this blade as we showed in the first video with a very tiny screw that I made. Let's pull that out and the lock insert comes right out. So there's the milling that I did underneath. Uh, the fit is perfect. There's a little tiny bit of slop. I haven't actually measured how much, but it, it certainly goes on easily and comes out easily. I might want to make it uh, a teensy bit tighter because you don't want it shifting back and forth. You want a secure fit, but I also want it to come apart easily. So we're trying to figure out the balance between uh, you know, a good fit and uh, good maintainability. Ah. Um, I love how it has the integrated over travel stop so we don't have to use the little round one that we had before. Um, I, I like how the over travel is right where your thumb goes. It actually has a different feeling to it, which I like a lot too. And uh, yeah, so we're trying to get the geometry just right. So when the steel insert contacts against the blade, we get the perfect angular contact. Because something that's super important for a lock face, if this is your blade and this is your handle, they, they can't go like this. They actually have to tilt back. I forget how many degrees, but just ever so slightly. Um, and these two happen to be actually almost touching. So as you can see here, we did a Sharpie mark so that as we lock up the knife, we can tell uh, where it's contacting. Up here is good, down here is bad. So we tried, uh, this was a slightly older blade. We tried that blade, we tried a different blade. They did feel a little bit different. So. The way that we attack this surface with the scotch bright wheel and with the polishing uh, does affect how the knife locks up, so might have to change our strategy a little bit. Um, let me throw it back together real quick and I'll show you something. Watch how fast this goes together as I forget to put in the lock insert. Uh, the downside you know, to the lock insert is you can't anodize it like the rest of the titanium. So if this handle were blue, the insert would always be silver. I think it looks awesome. The way that it blended together, you can't even hardly see it anymore. Um, if they were two colors, of course you could, but I think I got the blends for the first try. I got them really, really good. Goes together good, doesn't have any lock stick. Um, as far as the geometry goes, if I hold it so that my fingers don't get cut off and I give it a spine whack, um, let's go upstairs. I'll show you how we do that. Take this other knife too, come on. So, this block of wood, I had a different block of wood that spine whacked like 800 knives and we switched to this one. So this knife does not have the, uh, the lock bar insert. It's our regular titanium lock. This one is not sharp. Um, so normally, every knife that we set up, Eric will go like this, or, or Angelo's doing it now. Hold the block of wood, hold the blade so that you don't cut yourself. I'm not recommending that customers do this, but we do it. And then we spine whack it like this. Do it like 10, 20, 30 times. I forget what the current count is that the guys are doing, but 
I know when I did it, I used to do 30 times before carbonizing and then 15 times after carbonizing. But the lock does not fail when you do that. With the new lock insert, there, it does fail. It can fail. So that's obviously bad. There's something wrong with the two geometries, how they're going together. Um, and I might just have to tweak that. As I said with the Sharpie mark, it's contacting in too many areas. So that's something. And then the slight geometry issues that I might have to deal with. So under normal circumstance, you're holding it, you're using it, it's not gonna fail, but this is our test and it needs to be able to pass this test. Otherwise, uh, otherwise she no good. And then it's just gonna roll over the lock and, and no good. So I got a little bit of drawing board to go back to, but um, it's really close, really close, really happy with it. Uh, and now we can talk about how we're gonna make the next one. Now, a lot of other people do make these lock inserts. Um, typically, what I've seen when they make them, they'll nest them in a little square of steel, whether they heat treat it first or after or something, and they'll nest like 20 in a little square. And that works okay. And then you leave little tabs. Some people heat treat first, some people heat treat with the thing, the nest, and tabbed out, and then they, you know, they flip it over and they surface grind the back or mill the back or whatever. I kind of don't like that workflow. I, I would rather have a one and done solution. So instead of doing something like that, my theory is to make it on my lathe, just like that. I think I can do it. It's a good challenge. I love a challenge. I think it'll work awesome. We'll use an emergency collet. So this is a softer steel collet that I can, uh, I can machine. So you put it into machine, the little pi pins um, let you compress it, you mill your shape into it. So I'll mill a relief of that into there and then pull the pins out and then this will, will have compression onto the thing. So it'll make it from the bar. It'll do all that milling. Do, 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 do. Mill, 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 do the slotty thing, mill the holes, mill the outside. This will come in, it'll grab the part, it'll pull it out, it'll chop it off, and then the part will be in here like that, and then we'll face off the back, maybe do a little chamfer, I haven't decided yet, and then spit it out, part's done, I can do lots of them. All right, so the first step of using this emergency collet is to face it flat. So I removed the original pins and I installed shorter ones that we had here so that I can actually face it. So I need to face it to a 0.750 flat. Nope, more. Machining it from already heat treated 17.4 pH stainless steel. Um, when you buy this stuff, it comes about 35 Rockwell. And then as you can see with the gold color, we've heat treated this 900 degrees for two hours uh, in our oven and that makes it 45 Rockwell. So 35 to 45, we haven't hardness tested it yet, but we should. And uh, that's my current project. I already have all the code and everything. Looking forward to trying this out, seeing if it works. There's a lot of variables. Will this even grip it enough to pull it out? Will it be a parallel part? Um, all this stuff, but looking forward to trying it.